We're sort of just drive, driving down our tracks at the moment, um, looking across at the cow shed over there and the effluent pond, and um, sort of looking down down the Porokino Valley. It was basically logged by the cleavers, and um, it was only about 50 years ago that this part of the farm got converted over as they logged the trees out of it. So we, they got left with a lot of um, native blocks, bits that they didn't get to, and that's what's left on the farm now. So. And so as we get further down the farm, we'll see that the, um, the bush margins get wider and it'll give you a bit of an idea of what can be done around um, rivers and streams and oxbows. It was, it was a pretty run down farm and um, was had a lot of weeds. I came here in 2000, so I started off with a, a little um, 100 hectare farm and yeah. since then it's just been extending. So, so this, um, what we're coming down into now, is this is where the boundary was and then I brought another 80 hectares next door, which was the sheep farm, and um, we converted that. So this gully that we're looking up here is um, a, farm, a bit that we're going to retire to farming um, because of the, um, the water in it and the impact it's having on that water. So this gully here will get planted out in natives and the paddocks will come up to the gullies. Uh, it's a lot of money. Um, it would probably be, I would expect that this job here would be somewhere in the fifteen to twenty thousand dollars by the time we put all the trees in. It's a lot of work to get it to go back to something that looks like this so it's been a lot nicer when we haven't had to start off from ground zero. I like native bush, I like the biodiversity and I think the incentive for me is it's, I, I don't really just want to have um, great square paddocks, I'd, I'd like the biodiversity around the paddocks and the shelter and all the other stuff that it creates for the animals and for the biodiversity channels. But down here is um, the wetland that we put in, um, this is the one that um, Environment Southland did some data on. and. Um, what had actually happened, we put a duck pond in um, at the bottom part here and it actually had silted up within five years and so we decided to put a silt um, sediment pond in to collect the sediment out of the drain and um, it actually hasn't silted up since then so I think the management around the, the further management further up the paddocks has um, slowed down the sediment coming off the paddocks because we've been sort of catching it. So we planted willows around the outside oh, and yeah. um, the gorse I'm sort of just using as a nurse crop yep. um, and we'll start introducing once the grass gets um, dies down we can put natives underneath the gorse. One of the other things that we noticed was um, the tracks were running a lot of effluent into areas that we didn't want them so we're sort of redesigning the, the tracks so that they have an uh, easier gradient, the cows don't go up and down as much they don't stop on corners because cows don't like to stop on corners. So if we can keep the cows moving, that stops the effluent um, building up on the tracks. So this is a sediment trap. So the first bit, um, this, the water runs into this and then it goes through a pipe in the bottom end and it comes back through the another pond over the other side and then it runs around the back by the willows and then it goes through a carbon bed and then it goes back into the tile. This took actually only a couple of days and um, we've designed this so that the diggers can clean it out. So the digger can go down that middle where those two little ducks are, go down the middle there and pull out all the sediment. You can sort of see the sediment that runs off earthworks just there because that was a pond. The tyres are a bit of a, ch a challenge to be fair, so it's um, it was a way of just get, getting them and building a a ford over this gully, but I think the dirt stops the uh, the leachants going in per se, but that's the problem sometimes, you, you do something and then you go, oh I shouldn't have done it with tyres, I should have done it with this, or I should have done it with that. And um, with the wet spring that we've had, um, this is what happens when we cows congregate in the area, the cows kind of poach it up like this, so the cows have obviously walked to the corner on a wet, after, uh, wet night and stayed in this corner to get out of the weather. So this would have happened in about 2016 and we've planted a few trees here. These ones here would be about five or six years old now. But we're just building pockets up and then we'll join the pockets up. So, And we're using the uh, gorse as a, 
sort of a crop to um, kill the grass really. It's anything that's stopping the, slowing the water down across the landscape is going to help with um, nutrients being taken up from it. When it disappears, when it goes through too quickly, we've got no chance of slowing anything down or stopping anything. So the attitude I've taken is just more, if we can slow it down through the landscape, even if it's one or two days, that helps with the process of um, sediment dropping out of the water. And then the nitrates and all that sort of stuff get used up through, like we've added a carbon bed that with a carbon bed over there, and that helped because that um, reduced the nitrogen when we tested it with the scientist just to see how effective it was. So we did four tests, uh, we did different tests on that drain over where the uh, sediment traps were, and we found that by the time the water got out, it had improved. So that gave me hope that we can actually affect the water. So this, this is uh, just a straight wetland though. Because of um, our debt situation we haven't been able to spend a lot of extra money on the farm. So we've effectively um, haven't done any drainage for a good five or six years. And therefore what it's actually shown us is where all the wet areas are. And the cost of um, the, um, having those areas sort of semi-swampy. So rather than fight it we'll probably just start to revert those back and then drain to those areas. This gully here will start to look like this in time as we go back up through this bit, so um, which should have a you know, better impact on the water because at the moment it's drained to here and then it goes through a, um, a stream down through the gully here. But it would be better if we um, allowed it to come all the way. So the, the old neighbour used to call this kuru paddock, so they used to have fresh crayfish, but there's no crayfish there now because it's, because it's all grass. So. So I'm sure as we restore that back, it will enable the kuru to come back in. And we effectively won't lose a lot of land. And it will create a, a filtering area for the rest of our land around it. So this one here is um, a six metre um, buffer on this side and it's got um, willows on the other side. So this is more of a natural, um, sort of like what, it's got poplars and willows as the repairing and planting. And there's the drain in there. So This is the drain more not as a, a cleaning drain but more as a, when the floods come through it gets water off the paddocks. Um, 197 hectares, yeah. um, but we only farm about 165 of the, the, the hectares, um, but then we lease another 110 hectares. Uh, we're, we're milking 760 cows at the moment. And the, the, it's um, sort of named Pora for the eel trap, and the Kino I think is the, the good the goodness of the water but it's quite got a lot of tannins in this water so this is the first time it runs past the dairy farm here as it makes its way to the sea. The other stream on the other side of our farm is the one that's causing the trouble it's got it's high in E. coli yeah. and so but it's a lot more modified as a river. So these margins are the ones around there's a Kofi there South Island Kofi um, but these are the margins around the rivers which would be up to six or seven meters away from the river. So this um, the first bit that you'll see here are the uh, crack willows that we've um, poisoned. Um, these are not natural or not, not native, so we wanted to get remove those from the um, from the oxbow. Um, they would have been poisoned about four or five years ago with a fund from um, uh, ES. They paid us five thousand dollars to remove them. Got variable buffers on them, so basically we don't go three meters from the stream. We just go to where the trees are but also where the overflow comes into it so if there's overflow from the land we'll tend to extend the buffer out so that it um, has more time for the water and the sediment to drop out or be used up. An oxbow is where the old river used to run through and um, it returns to another part in the river and it leaves this sort of a semi wetland so this dries out in the summer and um, yeah, this is what we would normally drain 
and um, you know reclaim for farming. But this one stayed here because of because of the decisions not to do it. The crack willows are the things you can see down, starting to fall down there now. They're starting to break up, so we've got a little bit of regrowth, which we'll have to respray. But yeah, just just the sound down here just it just refreshes you when you're not um, when the busyness of life is just rushing you by. You know, you'll come here and you know five or ten minutes is just all you need, and it just yeah, gives you perspective again. The farm actually doesn't define me. I'm I'm, I'm I'm David and um, you know, I enjoy farming and I'm part of the land but it's not what defines me. We have a responsibility to do the best that we can with what we know and um, I'm just grateful because my grandparents and great grandparents were developers. But um, I don't know what sowed something, there's some seed in there that got sown at school probably when um, I realised that we just can't keep doing this. and. My life journey has been about um, respecting the water that's in and respecting the land that we live on and the air that we breathe and the, the water that we drink. It's not unlimited. It's not something that we can abuse. It has to be um, nurtured. The regional forum, um, it was just an extension of what I was doing. Um, I was excited about being involved with the process and um, learning about the processes. Um, um, I've, been, I've enjoyed, I've observed um, other engagements across the New Zealand um, and you know, I really much, very, very much want to be a part of the one down here, um, the journey of um, collaborating and, um, and talking through your values and then listening to other people's values and then enabling something more beautiful to come from that. Um, and I like the fact that it... Um, of the makeup of the group, it wasn't voted in. It was a, you know, and it, you weren't representing anything. You were representing a, a community view.